Good morning, everyone. Thank you for um, joining us for our monthly virtual parent meeting with Early Childhood Intervention Program. Um, thank you for your patience. We're running a little late this morning, but we finally got everything all figured out. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for um, joining us for our monthly <laughs> virtual parent meeting. I got an echo. <laughs> A Monday today around here. <laughs> um, so today we'll be set up um, right in the hallway outside our office suite. We're in the the Sapa Quad Quad D. We're next to Tribal Court and Child Support Enforcement. So I'll stop in today until three o'clock. We'll be giving out the diapers. Today we will do things a little differently. The weather's supposed to um, get a little ugly today. So if you're not able to make it today, um, today only, you need to call and let us know that you watch the parent meeting and then um, what size diapers you need and the name of the children, and then we'll set them aside for you so you don't miss out. We certainly don't want anybody um, out in the bad weather if they don't need to be, so. Um, but you need to let us know today that you watched the video. So, um, you can either um, text me, I think I listed my phone number, 605-268-1199, or you can um, inbox on our Facebook page, or inbox uh, Rolanda or myself even so just let us know that you watch the meeting and you need to pick up your diapers at a later time so, so early childhood for those of you that are not familiar with our program or just watching for the first time um, we are a child find program funded by the Bureau of Indian Education and what we do is we um, um, sign up children, all native children on the reservation from ages zero up to age five. So what we're doing is regular screenings at um, six months of age, one, two, three, four, and five years of age. And we wanna make sure that your children are um, being developmentally screened to see if they're um, on, on the right um, level as other children their age in reaching their milestones. And if they're not, the best time to catch those delays is early. So the earlier we can catch your child's delay or find out about a disability, the more that you can start working with them when they're younger and um, get them on a, um, an individual education plan or an individual family services plan. So um, if your child is delayed, we'll help, um, help you down that path in getting your child the help that they need. So um, once you sign your child up for their, our program, um, they'll get an intake bag with some diapers and books and some other things that we have in the office. And then um, when they get their um, regular screening, then they'll get um, an incentive of diapers and wipes or laundry soap if they've been potty trained. And we also have pull-ups available too. So today we have all sizes in stock, so nobody's got to worry about an IOU today. So um, our next parent meeting will be Wednesday, January 19th. And that's going to be with the Office of Environmental Protection. And they're going to be talking about keeping our homes environmentally safe. So that'll be in January. So today, our topic is smart money, and which is a really good time of year, I think. When winter comes, that's when our cars break down. That's when our heating expenses kick in. We need warmer clothes and boots. And then we have the holiday seasons. So um, we definitely need to be smarter about money. So today we've invited Ella Robertson with us and she's gonna be talking about that and giving us some uh, money management tips, um, how to set up a household budget and identifying our leaky spending. I, was, I mean, that happens to me too. I'm like, where'd all my money go? So we're looking at those little ways and keeping track and finding out where that money's going. And Ella's gonna help us do that today. So, are you ready, Ella? Yes. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for asking me to, to do this presentation. Um, I had training in financial literacy uh, back when I worked in planning and it really opens your eyes to thinking um, how you spend your money and, and um, the stresses that it causes. About, um, the stress that um, money causes, um, even when you have more money or extra money that's tends to cause stress as well so i did do a powerpoint and on smart money and how to make it last did you turn it on tom okay all right so when it comes to money 
We ask ourselves, why am I so stressed? What are my bills? And what am I spending my money on? How can I save money? And what are my goals for 2022? So those are some of the topics that we're gonna cover today. Is that we notice, especially now, like um, Charnel said, winter time brings an extra amount of stress because there's a lot of special things that we need to do in the winter time to prepare for the cold weather. We need to winterize our homes, so we're spending money on plastic for our windows so that uh, we seal it up and we're not having to crank the heat up on high because there's wind coming through the windows. Um, I bought uh, plastic for my windows and then I bought coking and the coking was about five bucks and then the gun is about five dollars and so I went around to all of my windows and put coking I, I, I went on a windy day which we have a lot of those around here windy days and felt around the windows to see where the wind was coming in and I used the coking to go around the windows and so Winter time brings um, extra amount of stress because our homes can be cold and drafty. So we're paying extra for heating. Our car needs winter tires. It needs to be winterized to make sure that we've got um, good heating in there um, for when we're traveling and, and we don't want to break down with our kids in the car. We're having to buy winter clothes, boots, hats, mittens, snow pants, snow jacket. And um, it's a lot more expensive than any other season of the year um, because of those extra expenses. And then of course, we have Christmas. You know, and we, we tend to go overboard when it comes to Christmas and um, compensating for maybe what we didn't have when we were growing up. So we want to do that extra for our kids or, or our family and well, even ourselves. We like to, who doesn't like to shop for themselves at Christmas time when you see all these great deals? So those are some things that kind of add to the stress. Some of the symptoms are just like anxiety. You have a shortness of breath, racing heart. Um, you tend to avoid phone calls because you know that you know the credit card company is, is calling. Or maybe it's the, the phone bill. Like mine, if I'm late, the um, Roberts County RC Communications, they're calling. You know, and it shows up Teenix. And so then I'm hitting ignore on there. Well, it's in the, you know, I'm gonna post it online here in, um, tomorrow or, you know, when I get money in my account. Pretty soon, you know, you're not wanting to go out with your friends or, or do anything with your family because you're so stressed out about, about money and geez, I have to spend gas to drive over here or there. Or, you know, they're gonna expect me to, to um, go out to eat and I don't have money to do that. And so then you start changing plans and it's embarrassing. You know, um, it's embarrassing to to not have money and you don't want to ask um, to borrow any or maybe you're on the other end of the spectrum and, and you're borrowing and you're overextended. You owe all of your cousins $20, you know, so, so now you're out of options. Um, but a lot of times it really does bring um, a feeling of shame because you feel that you're inadequate and unable to provide for your family, which, you know, that's family is important to us. Um, you might feel out of control or that you can't keep up. We'd always tease about the vortex, you know, because then when bill time comes around, mine is the 10th. I have a whole lot of, of bills that, that come on the 10th. There's about four or five of them and they're not small. Like my uh, car insurance comes out. Um, well, my Sam's Club, I have to have Sam's Club. <laughs> um, my, my phone bill. And um, luckily, electric this year, I'm talking to people and electric has gone down a little bit. You know, last year, about this time, I was paying $300 in electric. This month, it was $194. i am like, oh my God, you know, I about fell over. And, you know, so it's... Um, it's those times of the month where, where we're feeling that extra stress because we know that those bills are coming in on that day. So then it makes us you know, angry or irritable and, and we get annoyed easily and maybe we take it out on our kids or, or our spouses or our family. And um, you know, I would tease my sister about that because she would get crabby around the same time every month and I was like, hey, is the electric bill due or what? And, and she'd laugh because I totally knew because <laughs> 
<laughs> um, she lives in a trailer house, so her heating was, her heating and cooling was just outrageous, and and we'd laugh about that because she just have a short fuse, and I'd be like, hey, the electric bill must be due, you know. <laughs> And we don't think about that, you know. It's something that happens subconsciously in the back of your mind because you're stressed out about it. And so you consistently have those worries and concerns and and kind of a feeling of hopelessness, like there's this big old pit that you're never going to be able to get out of. And so, you know, I'm today I'm hoping that I can provide some help so that we're not feeling all those, um, those mixed emotions, you know, because... Um, we just want a happy life. Um, we we hope for simpler times, but it's just it's just not like that. You know, money makes the world go round, and so this is how we feel. This is probably how we're look sitting there, you know, looking at at all of our bills and and God, how am I going to make make it to through the next month? And so let's take a look at our bills. What are they? Um, we have rent, electric, water and sewer phone um, daycare some of us have daycare still still have babies that need to be taken care of phone and internet and those are the ones that um, come monthly those are the ones that um, are consistent so are we doing payroll deduction to um, take care of these bills maybe some of them um, automatically come out of your bank account and so then you know that it's coming out and it's gonna make you overdrawn. So then that causes stress because, oh my gosh, now they're gonna charge me $25 fee. I need to hurry up and get, you know, 50 more dollars in there so that it covers that bill. You know, so you have those continuum amounts of stress. Maybe there's so much coming out of your payroll deduction that your paycheck is $5. You know, and, and I've, I've heard that when I was working here at the tribe and, you know, um, working with the credit union because I had asked them if they needed me to do classes over there and they're like, oh my gosh, Ella, we, we have so many um, patrons that are overextended and their payroll comes in and it doesn't cover all the deductions that are coming out. And so that's just an example of poor budgeting. And so maybe they just need help to figure out how much money do they have coming in, how much money do they have going out. Um, and um, some people are, are on a prepay or a budget program, like Fuel Inc. offers that, I know, for, for propane. Um, I posted about a month ago about the cost of propane has gone up considerably since last year. You know, last year I think it was like a dollar six or something like that. And now it's, it's way more than that. So a 250 gallon fill up was going to be almost $700. It was like 600 and, and some dollars. And who can, who can manage that? You know, who has an extra $600 laying around that, that can pay that to fill their, their tank? And so on top of your regular monthly bills, then you have your regular expenses. And these ones can fluctuate. They can, you know, maybe they can be be um, very little. Some months maybe they might be a little more. Um, groceries, mm -hmm. gas, cell phone, toiletries like your shampoo, hairspray, lotions, deodorants, those type of things. Um, household items, how often do you buy cleaning stuff for for your home, toilet paper, dish soap, uh, those types of things. And, you know, I imagine that expenses will be a lot less once the dollar store opens in Sisseton, right? Because you can go in there and get 20 items for $20. <laughs> but that's, those are things that we need to look at. And then we look at what resources do we have? Do I have, if you have a job, how much do you make on your payroll? What if you don't have a job, or if you have a job, you can also be doing odd jobs on the side. Some people bead, so maybe they babysit. Um, you know, my son, he cleans cars as his side job. Um, people do a lot of things for, for, some people do cleaning for odd jobs. Um, do you get SNAP or EBT? What type of, of um, resources, Bennett, or, um, program assistance are you getting WIC, um, energy assistance, TANF or GA? 
do you get child support? How much is that a month? Is it consistent where you can actually depend on that? And um, identifying any other resources. And don't be afraid to ask for help. It's hard sometimes to think about how am I going to set up a budget? So let's take a minute. Sit down with your piece of paper, get a piece of paper and write down those bills. How much do you pay for rent? How about your electric? And you might want to um, round it up $10 so, or the, to the nearest 10 So if I pay $194 this month, then I'm going to say that my electric is $200. How about your phone and internet? How much are you paying for that? Mine runs about $100. Another bill that I have is my water bill. And that runs me, I'm gonna put $60. Sometimes it's less and sometimes it's more. In the summertime, I use a lot more water. Um, and let's add those up. I don't pay anything for rent because I own my own house. But I'm going to say um, $300 for now. So if I owe $300 for rent, $200 for electric, $100 for phone and internet, and $60 for water, that's $660 that I have to have each month. And so what are my other expenses? How much am I paying for groceries? How much do you pay a month for groceries? Like say you get your, your even if you get EBT and SNAP, how much do you pay? Mine runs about $200. How much do you pay for your cell phone? I have the $45 plan, but I'm gonna put $50 to account for taxes and all of that. How about gas? How much money are you spending on gas every week? Even if you if you don't have a job, say you need to run your kids to school or or you need to do errands, how much are you spending um, per week? I'm going to put fifty dollars on mine. It costs me thirty five dollars to fill up my tank, and then. I'll have to put in a little bit extra to make it through the week. So I'm going to put $50 for mine. How about for toiletries? How much are you spending for shampoo and conditioner, hairspray, toothpaste, toothbrush, all of that per month? Mine is about $20. It's not that much. Um, that I spend. My stuff, my products last a long time. How about household items? How much are you spending on trash bags, paper towels, dish soap, laundry detergent? I'm going to put $50 on mine. Because um, when I do shop, I like to buy the economy size laundry soap um, because it's a little bit cheaper and it lasts longer than buying um, two smaller ones and I just use the dollar the one dollar um, dish soap from the dollar store um, and I like to use um, Sam's Club because I buy a lot of things in bulk and it's cheaper and sometimes we can you know we have a relative that maybe has a Sam's Club card and and we can send our list and our money and we can get those things for for cheaper so I'm going to add those items up two three 
So that's $370 per month. So all total between my expenses and my, my regular bills is $1,040. Wow. I don't... If you've never um, looked at your expenses and added them up and put them down, sometimes you can be shocked about how much your bills are because in reality, I have a lot of bills that, I'm, that um, I didn't include, like my car insurance and... Um, my student loan, um, you know, maybe I have a loan at the credit union, um, revolving loan. Who doesn't have a revolving loan? Everybody who has a revolving loan, raise your hand. <laughs> you know, that's a lot, of, a lot of people. And sometimes we're, we're maxing out that revolving loan just to pay, you know, these bills. And then we're paying interest on those bills on top of it. So... Now that we, we have how much we need um, to pay for our bills, let's look at our resources. How much are we making in payroll? Mine fluctuates, I work from home, so mine is a little bit different. But say I had a regular paying job and I'm bringing home $500 A week is that about average okay so that means that every month if I get paid weekly $500 that means that I'm getting paid $2,000 for the whole month how much am I getting in EBT well it depends on how many kids I have if I'm making $500 a month if I had four kids I would probably qualify for some EBT you think but so let's look write down all of your resources EBT energy assistance what items on your bills and expenses do they cancel out maybe your, your EBT pays for all of your groceries so then you can put a star by that because that one can come off of your your bill list because EBT is paid for that or you have energy assistance so you have energy assistance and you were approved for $2,000. So that means that your electric bill is paid for. So let's put a star by the electric bill because that one is all paid for through energy assistance. And so then we're left with rent, phone and internet, water, and then cell phone down on the bottom, gas, toiletries, and household items. So when we take a look at those and we add those up and see where we're at. So if I'm taking, so that leaves me with $640 in bills per month because my EBT is paying for my groceries and my energy assistance is paying for my electric. Mm -hmm. And so if I have a payroll of $2,000, then I have enough resources to pay for my um, bills and expenses. Awesome, you know, to, to look at it like that. Maybe ha I have extra um, EBT left over so then I can buy maybe um, some non-essentials, snacks for the kids and uh, maybe some high-end other items. But so the next thing is, so then you're looking at this and it's like, well, how come I'm broke every month then? If I have all this extra money, where is it going? 
And so that's where we start to identify our leaky spending. And leaky spending is what are the extra or unnecessary items that you're buying? What um, extra or unnecessary activities are you doing? And so what are some of those? Do you have any idea? 3B. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So here's extras and I don't have three bean on here, but, um, energy drinks are one of them. Cigarettes, excess driving or excess trips. We're not planning out our day. And, and, you know, I live in Bakuli. So if I have to make two or three trips to town, that's 30 miles round trip, you know, pr pretty soon I'm like putting in gas, you know, tomorrow after I just filled up my tank today. Eating out is an extra. And um, maybe extra purchases. We have that extra money. So sometimes we feel like we need to spend it until it's gone. Um, and it's a learned behavior because maybe our parents did that. We saw our parents earn money and then they would be broke all week long. Right, and they never had any money for, for anything throughout the week or two weeks, you know, because back then we got paid every two weeks, sometimes once a month, you know, so you really had to manage your money, money well. So let's take a look at one of them real quick, like energy drinks. How much am I spending on energy drinks? And so when we're paying cash for something, $3 doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Because you're like, oh shoot, I have that, you know, laying around in change. $3. So say you're buying one energy drink a day, $3 a day. That adds up to $21 a week. That adds up to $84 a month. If you buy one energy drink per day at $3, that's $1,008 per year that you're spending on one energy drink a day. So imagine if you're doing two, $2,016. Wow. What can you buy with $2,000? You know, so let's start to put some of this into perspective, some of, some of our leaky spending. What about eating out? You know, like, wow, you know, I don't eat out that often, you know, and it's a treat for us. Um, my schedule is too busy. I don't have time to go home and, and cook a meal. It's just easier if, if we eat out. Or maybe I'm just not a good cook. Maybe my mom didn't teach me how to make things from scratch. So like we're sick of having hamburger helper or you know some of those quick meals. And so if I were to take my family out to eat twice a week, and this is assuming that it's a $40 meal. Sometimes it's more than that, you know, but say we're going to Taco John's. We go over there to see lettuce lets. And it's $40 every time that we go there. So if we're going there twice a week, then that's $80 a week. That adds up to $720 a month. That totals $8,640 a year. If you're going out to eat two times a week and it's costing you $40 every time. That is a car, people, to go out to eat. And it's it's because of convenience or, or you know we feel like we don't have enough time. So say you cut it down and you decide, I'm only going to take my family out to eat once a month or once a week. You cut it down to $40 a week, that's $360 a month, that's still $4,320 a year. It's still a lot of money. So what about you that work? That you're, let's see, this isn't, this, um, Math isn't right. So say that you're um, you're working out to the tribe, and it's just cheaper for you to stay there and eat at the cafeteria, right? And so you're spending ten dollars a day 
on meals. You're getting the special. So each week you're spending $50 on meals. Each month you're spending $200 on meals. But of course we feel it's justified because we're like, well, I'm at work, so this is a work expense. $200 a month, $2,400 a year. That's how much we're spending on eating out for, for work. So let's look at some of these things that we're spending money on. I didn't even go to cigarettes, right? I'm guilty of that, just the same as, you know, many people. Is how do we get some of that leaky spending in control? Number one is identifying it. Try, like, for one month, keeping track, a journal, even if it's just a scratch piece of paper. Well, as soon as your um, wallet is coming out or you're spending something, write it down. That's how we keep track of it. Um, maybe you're buying a 12-pack of pop, and um, but you don't get EBT, so you're paying it cash, right? Keep track of it. For one whole month, all the things that you're spending your money on, so then you realize where... Um, some of your unnecessary or extra spending is coming from. That's one way to do it. Right now, holiday season, it makes it really hard. It makes it very difficult because um, our spending gets a little out of control if we celebrate Christmas. Sometimes we overcompensate with our children, um, maybe because we're not spending as much time with them or maybe because we grew up poor and so we're wanting to do all that extra stuff, buy those extra things um, for them because we, we went without as, as, um, as kids. Um, maybe we're just wanting, we're competitive and, and we want to keep up with our neighbors or our friends and they got the latest new iPhone. So, I've got to buy the new latest iPhone. Holy smokes, how much is it? 1000 something? Oh no, but I'm on a payment plan. So then it doesn't seem as much, but do you really need that new phone? I've never been one to splurge on phones. Um, just if it can do what I need it to do, I can download Office on it and... Um, the different things that I needed to do, then I'm okay with it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I kind of, you know, wish that it had an amazing camera, you know, like the iPhone does, but it's not like I'm going to be shooting professional videos and posting them. But it's what do you really need to get by? And so that's, that's really what it is. Because sometimes I think, holy smokes, you know, when I was working a full-time job and making good money and I see people who didn't have a job and they're running around with a brand new iPhone it's um, it was shocking to me and but that happens quite often and um, so those are the things that that we want to look at once we start getting a handle on where we're spending our money Coming up with a plan for for budgeting it and taking some of the stress out of managing our money, we can feel free. You know, stress can really um, pile up when we're thinking about money, especially during the holidays. And holidays are already stressful as it is. You know, that that's time of year that we're missing our loved ones that have passed or. Um, you know, that there's a lot of things that have happened, you know, throughout this, this past year with COVID where we're missing loved ones. And, and so having that added stress of, of money really compounds things. And so we want to be able to feel, feel a sense of relief and that we've got everything under control. And that's what planning can do. Planning can help take the stress out of managing your money. And so I want you to go back and look through some of the steps that we talked about. Identifying your expenses, identifying your bills, looking at your resources and how much resources you have, 
identifying your leaky spending and where can you cut back? You know, if you take that extra trip to town, how much is that costing you? Or if you're buying three bean every day, how much is that costing you per day? Maybe all of those meals that you're eating at your job. Maybe two or three times you can bring leftovers or something from home. Maybe a microwavable meal. Something to cut back on expenses. And so those are some things that, that I feel would be really helpful and help to alleviate some of that, that stress that managing your money um, can take. It takes a toll on us. And so we wanted today to provide, you know, some helpful tips and, and information to our families out there to help them um, have a better way of life. And I think that's one thing that we have in common is money. Everybody has to manage money. Um, and we think that in, you know, in an ideal world, we wouldn't have to, to worry about that, but we do now. Are you showing my slideshow? Oh, okay. Um, are there any... I think um, Charnel can probably take questions if there's anything that we need to um, provide information on in the future. Maybe someone has a specific question that, that concerns money management or something in the future that they want to see addressed directly and um, that we can help with because I think that this is an important topic. Do you have any worksheets available for like helping somebody plan out a budget or you know, kind of a summary of everything that you discussed to show where they would add or subtract and put things in and stuff to kind of simplify sure. it? Because I think we did provide one that the last time we had the, yeah. the deal, yep. So we can, I can make that available again. I think we tried to laminate them last time so that it would be erasable. So we'll try and um, we'll get that put together so that will be available to the parents. And um, I do that. I, I write down my, my bills for the month and I put them on the fridge. You know, when when my um, Eric and I were splitting bills, then we got to see exactly how much everything was, the total. And then we had the date when it was due. You know, so there's two times a month where where bills were heavy. And sometimes you might even call to say, hey, can you move this bill to such and such a date? Or, or maybe you pay it in advance so that it falls on, on that day where maybe your car payment isn't coming out at the same time because that can always add stress. And so it's finding ways um, to make it all work out. And sometimes it's, it's taking the initiative to pay something ahead just so that the schedule works out um, better for us. Because like I said, the 10th for myself is, is um, very stressful because I have four bills all coming out at once and, um, and I can imagine you know, some of the stress that our parents are going through. So I think just looking at it from, from this perspective is, is a good, good way and help us to set goals for 2022. You know, how are we going to better manage our money? Maybe what are some things that we can sacrifice that are causing us to um, spend, overextend ourselves where we're living beyond our means? Um, one is rent to own. A lot of people like to do rent to own and you end up paying sometimes two or three times what the item is worth versus um, saving, saving that money, um, saving up in order to make an outright purchase. And we don't do that a lot. We, we live on credit. We do a lot of things on credit. And um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, having that revolving loan over at credit union or, you know, maybe one of your local banks and then um, you're consistently, you pay it down, you know, you have $300 paid down on it and then right as soon as it's available, can I get that out? You know, and so it's never coming down. You're never actually paying down on it. You're always maxing it back out again. And I was guilty of that, you know, younger when I was younger um, or using um, Grady services. 
and it was kind of crazy and I don't know if I shared this the last time but um, you know because Grady's my relative and um, I had went over there to make make a loan and he's like Ella come here come outside you know so we went outside his his office this was when he was on Main Street and he really put his arm on me he said you see that car right there you know of course he always drove something brand new right and he's just like you help pay for that car you know and turns around and walks back in and I'm just like oh my gosh and it was at that time where I'm just like you know what I am not paying for his car you know because and I think maybe he did that purposefully you know that <laughs> it, to make me open my eyes like you could have this brand new car but here you are over here borrowing money from me you know and paying all these fees and whatever and so it did it totally made me turn turn everything around on how I was managing my money and it was more about you know just it was like a slap in the face to say you bought me that car <laughs> you don't always pay attention to those interest rates or you know those service fees yes you know, one time I had my Netflix bill hit my account and it was like 10 bucks but I was overdrawn so that instead of ten dollars, I was paying ten plus the twenty-five or the dollars. Yep. Yeah, so. and it cost you thirty-five dollars, or for each um, each overdraft that comes through. Like, so say you had three payments that all came through, and and you overdrew on all of them. Each one of them is assessed a twenty-five dollar fee. It's not just for twenty-five for this this one day. It's for each one. So then that's an additional seventy-five dollars. You know, so those are things that that um, you know we we try to to think about and and making sure that we have money in our account. And maybe some people don't even do that, but I do that. So then I'm not assessed a delinquent. Um, notice or or fees when it comes to my bills because then that affects your credit and you know we all we all strive to have good credit yeah um, i always say i don't even gamble where's my money boy <laughs> i don't even donate it anymore but, you know for people that work that are getting um say the hazard pay or whatever mm -hmm. you know that's additional income that you could be saving but somehow it just gets into that leaky bucket and it's like well, where'd my extra money go? I should have mm -hmm. you know, some savings here, but I don't. So, really taking a lot of thought and, and planning. So yeah, it does. I am you know, going to work on that much better. And that's something that probably we, we need to talk about, you know, for 2022. Is how do we start saving money? You know, because there's a lot of people that just do not have savings. And as I've gotten older, I've made a point to always have savings. And there's a reason for that, you know, because there's always some type of crisis. If it's not mine, you know, it might be, be someone else's. I'm the oldest in my family, so um, you know how that is. You yeah. end up kind of being responsible for for the rest of your family. So you're wanting to have that, that extra money available in case something happens and, and you're able to help help out your family. Yeah, I took my, my vehicle in to get the oil changed, and they said, you got this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. So they're doing, doing an estimate, and, you know, so that's going to have to come out of my savings. But mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're stressing about it. Yeah. Because you know, if, <laughs> if you don't have savings, then it's like, where am I going to borrow money to pay for, for these repairs? Yeah. What can I hawk? What can I take to Dakota Pond that is going to amount to enough to pay for, you know, um, this brake line that broke, or, mm -hmm. or this flat tire. I had a flat tire on my truck and it was $228, $230 for one tire. Mm -hmm. And I, I think being money conscious is something that we haven't been raised with. It was always survival. We mm -hmm. always had to survive and you could barely make it. So you didn't think about savings or planning ahead or anything. We were just, you know, as we grew up, our parents or grandparents grew up, we were just barely making it. Mm -hmm. So we kind of get into that that mode of thinking too. And, and I just think that's something, a cycle that we can change too. Mm -hmm. Growing up was always, well, if we have it, let's spend it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the next month, the electricity is shut off. Yeah. You know, or the car's broken down and we can't even fix the tire. Yeah. You know, but we had the money last month, but we spent it because we had it. Mm -hmm. You know, live for today and don't worry about tomorrow. And to me, I totally, um, I used to think that because then, you know, my parents would say that, well, that's how Indians are. You know, we're just living to, for today because we can die tomorrow. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally not true. Our people, historically, before we were put on reservations, were planners. 
They had cash pits they spent all year long preparing for the year. Mm -hmm. Hunting, gathering, fishing, all of that trading in order to have enough food to get themselves through the year. They planned. If they didn't plan, they died, literally. Mm -hmm. You know, because then you, you could starve, you, you could be caught out in the elements because you know you, you didn't plan ahead to where your camp was going to be or that you had food you know that that you were in a place where there was resources you know all of those things and and then once we were placed on reservations um all of that changed and it was because the non-indians changed the way that we think because they made us reliant on them but we received rations and this is how much you're going to get and, and then I talk about this in the schools when I'm doing my food presentations about rations because I want them to know how much control the government had over us, that, that all of our traditional foods that, that um, we gathered, hunted, fished, did all of that, they said, no, that's outlawed. Not just, um, I don't think you should, just straight out outlawed. You know, wrap your mind around that. How would you like the government to come into your home and tell your parents, you know, Put all of that food away because you're going to eat this every month and only how much we give you you know like that and and so it really changed um how we think about things and we're seeing the impacts today because now here we are still struggling and how do we get ourselves out of that way of thinking and into a more healthier um way of thinking well thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge on, on financial literacy you know I think it's something that you know hopefully we see it in, with our kids and in, in schools to mm -hmm. start thinking about that instead of waiting until they're in their 30s and 40s struggling to still get by so right to be smart about those things so thank you and if you have any questions um, you can certainly inbox us or we'll have those forms available at the office or we can email them or however we need to get them to you so you'll have the tools um, to succeed in, in managing your finances too and um, I truly b agree with Ella that you know the stress that it can cause you know is not only hard on us because we're the ones having to figure it out but also you know taking it out on our, our children our spouse or you know because we're struggling with um, the stress of all of that too so it will help bring some peace peace of mind to us and to our family too so um, just a reminder we'll be here until three o'clock giving out diapers if you're not able to make it, let us know today, and we'll set your diapers aside for you. So just let us know through inbox, text, or whatever that um, you watch today, and the um, sizes of the diapers that you need are pull-ups and the names of your children that are in our program. And we'll make sure we get them set aside for you. The sun is actually kicked out right now, so it's actually the first nice day I think we've had in a couple days. But um, once again, January 19th will be our next parent meeting, and we'll be live and we'll probably do it this way too i think um, today we did it a little different to get around our technical issues but um, it's on youtube and then we're sharing it that way too so um, maybe if you know somebody that hasn't been able to access our parent meetings because they don't have facebook that now they can get on um, youtube too and channel 390 on venturecom oh and channel um, 390 on venturecom <laughs> i'm very slow thank you <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us today. Have a good day.